Underwater photography is an awesome hobby, but the price tag keeps a lot of us from participating in it. Even an entry-level camera system can set you back thousands of dollars. But what if I told you that right now, at this very moment, you could buy a full-frame camera with housing for less than $500? Interested? I was too. There's just one catch. The uh, memory cards it uses, they don't look like uh, any digital camera I've ever seen. That's right. Today we're going to take a look at the Nikonos 5. It's a legendary film camera and we're going to be shooting some analog underwater photos on this episode of Submerge Stories. Yes, that's right. Today we're going to be talking about film photography. So I bought an old used underwater film camera and brought it down with me to snap some pictures and let's see how they turned out. Our first subject is the sea turtle that I got to spend some time up close with and honestly I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. Next up, a photogenic angelfish. I'm using a high speed color film called Portra 800. That's an 800 ISO film for all you photography folks out there. And I'm shooting this in Cozumel, which of course means plenty of beautiful wildlife like these eagle rays that passed us by. However, when I think of film, there's one style that comes to mind for me right away, and that is black and white. So let's take a look at how some black and white fish portraits turned out. But to tell you the truth, black and white wasn't my favorite way of capturing just straight fish. It shows up most apparently in this angelfish, which is so bright in the video, but loses its color in black and white film. I much preferred shooting black and white for underwater seascapes, where the texture was far more important than the color, as in the case of the sponge. I also think the black and white does a really nice job bringing out the contrast in this coral scene. In yet another area where black and white really shines is in bringing out the patterns on really unique fish, like this honeycomb cowfish. The black and white really drives home the honeycomb in its name in a way that the video does not. Or what about these? Spot fin butterfly fish. Frequent viewers of this channel will know I have made a whole video about them, one of my favorite fish. The black and white contrast in spot fin really stands out using this film. And here's the final area where I thought black and white really, really shined, and that's diver portraits. The black and white just adds a real moodiness to these pictures that I think the blue background doesn't do justice to. The black and white, and especially the pop of the black wetsuit, really brings her eye to the diver while making the overall environment just have this really cool, eerie, moody background that I just loved. I took three different diver portraits. Let me know which one is your favorite. So I think this is a pretty good time to take a pause and talk a little bit about the tools of the trade themselves. The camera I'm using is called a Nikonos 5 and it is considered by many to be one of the greatest underwater cameras ever built. As the name implies, there was a Nikonos 1 through 4. The original Nikonos was actually designed by Jacques Cousteau before Nikon took over the manufacture and branding. This particular camera came out in the late 80s and was produced through the mid 90s. Now what is perhaps most interesting about this camera is that it's what's called a rangefinder. So not only is there no back screen to look at, but the viewfinder actually isn't even connected to anything. You can't see what's in focus or not. In order to set your focus, you actually need to use the knob attached to the lens to change where you're going to throw the focus of the lens. You use the other knob on the camera to adjust the aperture or the size of the opening. Now, while this is obviously inconvenient relative to a modern digital camera, I actually kind of loved it. It was a great way to get a sense of the intuition for the relationship between aperture and depth of field. This took me a lot of time as a photographer and it was really cool to see mechanically the very strong relationship between how you set your aperture 
and what kind of depth of field you are going to get out of a shot. This is definitely quirky and not super convenient, but it honestly makes for a more fun and thoughtful experience, although there are certainly times when it doesn't work out. As we transition back to the underwater images, I think this is a good point to then talk a little bit about the philosophy of film photography, if we can call it that. Because the reality is, when you're shooting film underwater, you're not always going to get as good images as you could have gotten if you shot digital. Take this beautiful footage of these eagle rays that I had that just got totally lost and murky when I snapped the picture. Or take a look at this splendid toadfish. I was really excited to see it. It only lives in one place in Cozumel. But the film pictures, I just don't think did it justice. Or every once in a while, I go to take a photo and it turns out, well, my finger was in front of the lens. Or the subject is out of focus, or you develop it and there's a weird color cast. But here's the thing, that unpredictability of film, although it is one of its biggest drawbacks, it's also one of the biggest features of shooting with film. You kind of learn to live in the moment and to let go when a photo just doesn't come out. It's not digital after all, it doesn't need to be perfect. And on the flip side, sometimes you have moments that you're just not sure about. Did that snapshot you grabbed of a shark at the end of the dive come out? Well actually, yes it did. Or that photo of a diver you're taking, it gets photobombed by a very charismatic chub. Or the very end of the dive, you just want to use up the last of your roll. You take a picture of your buddy and you wind up with these beautiful, crisp turquoise blues that I just love. And so you get a lot of great delayed gratification from film. You don't always know what you're going to get. You only get a couple of shots for each thing. You've got to conserve them and you've got to think about them. I found myself paying much more attention to the dive and to the photos I was taking than I normally would when shooting digital. I thought this was actually a really great benefit of film. I plan on shooting it again soon. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments what was your favorite photo or let me know if you've ever used an underwater film camera before, maybe the Nikonos, maybe another system. My name is Seth and this has been another episode of Submerge Stories. If you still haven't gotten your underwater film fix, then please check out this video by William Sheepskin. His video on the Nikonos is by far the best on the platform. And if you think that we earned it, then go ahead and click the subscribe button. We'd love to have you be a part of this channel. We've got plenty of interesting scuba diving content to come in the pipeline.